Hey there, welcome to Feel Your Photos. We've been noticing a ton of engagement since COVID-19 has happened. A lot of photographers are sitting at home working on their websites and we're all for it. So one question that we've seen popping up in all of the Facebook groups that we follow is that Yoast is not able to read the content on your page. We thought we would take a minute to talk about that. So let's take a look at my site. So here we are in my back end and Yoast is giving me an orange smiley face and it's saying that I have some things to fix on my site. Um, if you start looking at this list and it's telling you that you have problems that you don't think are really there, it's very likely that Yoast isn't able to properly see the content in your page. Uh, this is only a problem for Yoast. It is not actually affecting how Google can see the content and rank your, your site. Um, Google, or Yoast is only able to see content that's in the actual WordPress page builder. It's not able to see anything that's built in a third party page builder, in my example, Flow Themes, uh, without some extra tools. So for Flow Themes on non-flex content, uh, this ACF content analysis for Yoast WordPress plugin will totally, not totally, it, it will fix most of your, your issues. Um, it probably won't fix how like images are displayed, stuff like that, um, if using the Flow Themes page builder. Um, another tool that you can use is the Yoast real-time content analysis tool. Uh, this is a website where you're able to actually paste in all of your content and it will do the analysis and give you the same sort of score as if it was on your site. This is really great if you're not on WordPress, if you're on Squarespace, Wix, uh, Webflow, or any other sort of uh, platform, you're able to use this to get the same score that Yoast gives. Which brings me to my final point, that while Yoast is a really great tool for beginners and people just learning SEO to kind of get an idea of which factors we should be optimizing and sort of how to optimize those, I don't believe that photographers need to follow them in, in probably most cases. Uh, so Yoast is great, it's a good starting point, but you're going to need to know when to disregard its recommendations. Uh, I can go through these really quick. Uh, key phrase and introduction. Um, this exact key phrase isn't showing up in the first paragraph. That's probably okay. Uh, if, if you're actually creating well-written and researched content, I don't believe Yoast is able to understand synonyms and the topic well enough to know that I'm actually talking about that topic in the intro introduction. Um, keyword or key phrase density, I really just don't even believe that this is a thing anymore. Um, it's saying that the focus key phrase was found three times and it wants me to have it seven times. This type of old school SEO with key phrase density is going to just create content that doesn't sound like natural at all to the reader. And it's kind of the SEO content that gives SEO a bad rap, where it sounds like a robot wrote it, uh, just really like spammed with keywords or stuffed. Um, key phrase in the meta description, I don't really think that's always necessary. You should have something close, but it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, previously used key phrase, this one I do highly recommend you pay attention to. I'm going to check and see which other two posts I've actually optimized for this keyword and make sure that I've de-optimized them. And this is the only page on my site that's targeting this topic. Uh, key phrase in a subheading. This I can kind of get behind, um, but it's it's hard to say. If, if you're using this key phrase in the H1, I don't think it also needs to be used in H2, H3, etc. That's something that I think I need to do a little bit more testing on to see if maybe there's better results if I just include it in an H2 and don't include it in the page title. Things like that that I'm starting to see some good or positive results with. Um, image alt attributes. This, I do not believe that the key phrase should be stuffed into image alt text at all. And you should just be using the alt text to actually describe the image. Although the image, if it's relevant to the content you're talking about, might naturally have a fit. Um, so I, I wouldn't pay attention to it telling you that you need more keyword stuffing in your alt text. Uh, key phrase and title, once again, previous experience, yes, you should have your key phrase in the title, especially like lower competition terms. Um, it just really works. Uh, I'm starting to hear some murmurs that de-optimizing your titles is actually leading to better rankings. 
So it's something that I also need to test more. The rest, it says that I did well. Outbound links, you should be linking out from your content. It's a sign that you have well-researched and well-sourced material. Internal links, huge. You need to be linking internally. Uh, so do follow that recommendation. Key phrase length, I, I don't really care about it. It's uh, green light on my key phrase length. Uh, meta description length, um, yeah, that's pretty important, but use a tool like Mangools. They have a, a tool to show you how the meta description will look in Google. Uh, I can link to it in the description. SEO title width, same with that, use the Mangools tool. And then key phrase and slug, I do believe that that's pretty important to show users that they're going to a page that's highly relevant to the term that they've actually searched for. So if you've done good keyword research and you, you know that this is a topic that you should be targeting and how it should be worded, I do like to use that in the slug. Um, outside of that, um, it's telling me that my, t my text contains 1700 words, that's a good job. Yeah, I, I do think so. Um, but you can also rank posts with 200 words. If that's 200 words that really satisfy the searcher's intent. So if a searcher is just looking for what date is the Canon 5D Mark V released or something, and I just have the Canon 5D will be released on September of 2022, uh, that's enough information to really satisfy that intent and it will rank. Um, but if I'm talking about the history of SEO, maybe 2,000 words is what it actually takes. Uh, so you, you need to really make that number make sense to the actual topic. And I think a lot of that nuance is what Yoast fails to do because it's making blanket recommendations that fit for the entire internet. Uh, so as you learn more about SEO, I think you'll learn that most of these recommendations can be disregarded and you'll kind of come up with your own uh, factors uh, and numbers to hit for these individual factors. Further, there are a few third-party tools that are paid that are they're like Yoast, but so much better. Um, maybe we'll do a few videos of those soon. One of them is called Pop or Page Optimizer Pro. Another is called Surfer, and a third is called Quora. So th those actually look at the content that you're competing with and what on-page factors, similar to Yoast, are working for the higher ranking content and make sure that your content is similar. Uh, that's a much better approach to take when looking for this sort of recommendation. And you can do it yourself without the paid tool by just looking at which pages are already ranking and how many headings they have. Do they use the keyword in the heading? Uh, how much text do they use? How many images? Uh, how many YouTube embeds? Things like that. Uh, so it, it takes a little bit more work, but it's gonna give you much better results than these blanket recommendations that Yoast is giving. So I hope this video helped. We talked about how to get Yoast to see our content, what to do if Yoast cannot see our content at all, and then finally, when we should actually listen to Yoast and when we should create our own uh, recommendations for ourselves. So happy blogging, good luck with your SEO efforts. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.